Tokyo, the capital of Japan, the largest and most populous city in the world. It is also ranked one of the top 10 most expensive cities in the world. However, traveling to Tokyo could be cheap if you know how to budget wisely. So today I'm going to show you how I survive for 4 days in Tokyo with the budget of 200 US dollars. This 200 US dollars budget includes accommodation, food, sightseeing and transport. If you are planning for a budget travel to Tokyo, this is definitely something for you. Without further ado, let's dive into my Tokyo 4-day itinerary with the budget of 200 US dollars. I arrived in Tokyo during the most beautiful season of the year, the early spring season. Our plane landed in Tokyo Haneda Airport, which is a closer airport to Tokyo city center. I am traveling solo this time. As soon as I arrived, the airport transfer to the city is what I need. I purchased a 48-hour Tokyo Metro Pass bundled with the airport transfer from Haneda at 1,800 yen. Since I will be in Tokyo for four days, I need another 48-hour Metro Pass selling at 1,200 yen. These Metro Passes give me the unlimited rides, hence my transport cost for this four days is capped at 3,000 yen. Now, it is time to check into my accommodation. I chose to stay in Hostel Den located in the city center and close to many attractions. I booked a bed in a four-bed dormitory room. It is a simple stay, but it provides the privacy I need at night. Although I need to share the hostel facilities with fellow travelers, most of the facilities are maintained in good conditions. The hostel's balcony provides a good view on the city skyline, it also provides laundry rack here if you want to save extra bucks on laundry. The cost for my 4 night stay here is 15,000 yen, it is the cheapest stay I found in this area. I dropped off my baggage here and had a shower before visiting my first attraction in Tokyo. My first attraction in day 1 is Akihabara, the epicenter of Japan otaku culture. I did not shop here, but a stroll along this street is enjoyable. It's dinner time now, I stumble upon Tendentenya, a chain restaurant selling Japanese tempura. The tempura meal costs only 760 yen. It is delicious and I enjoyed it with typical Japanese salaryman sitting beside me. After meal, it's time for a short walk along Sumida River located nearby. In early spring, 510 cherry trees of Some Yoshino and Oshima varieties burst into bloom here. A walk along the left bank of Sumida River awards you the stunning sight of blooming cherry trees with Tokyo Skytree in the background. This is one of the best free sightseeing activities during spring season in Tokyo. Well, here marks the end of day one. I have spent 123.89 US dollars. That means I am only left with around $76 for the next 3 days. Could I still survive 3 days in Tokyo with this amount of money left? Let's see. Good morning, it is my day 2 in Tokyo. I start my day by visiting Meguro River super early. Over a kilometer of cherry trees lining the paths on either side of the river in Nakameguro burst into bloom. Forming a corridor of flower clouds above the river. This is one of the best and free spots to view cherry blossom in Tokyo, but be sure to arrive early to beat the crowd. You could buy your breakfast in the convenience shop nearby. Sit down, relax and enjoy this magnificent view while having your breakfast. Happiness could be this cheap, isn't it? After a simple yet delightful breakfast, we come to Shibuya area. I arrived at Meiji Jingu Shrine after a 10 minutes walk from Yoyogi Station. This is an important shrine dedicated to Emperor Meiji and his wife who started the well-known Meiji Restoration. It is located in the busy urban area of Shibuya, Shinjuku and Harajuku. But the shrine is found deep within a dense evergreen forest which leaves me feeling soothed and refreshed after my visit. This attraction is easy to be included in your Tokyo itinerary due to its location, and it is free to visit. Since I have a packed day today, I choose to settle my lunch in Yosunoya nearby Shinjuku Station. I ordered a beef combo meal served with salad and clam soup. Yosunoya is a fast food chain in Japan, this is the healthiest fast food I've ever had. My next visit is a brief photo stop with the Olympic symbol in front of Japan National Stadium. Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games were once taken placed here. 
It is one of the most special events in the history as it was held without spectators in the midst of global pandemic. Now I am feeling exhausted after visiting three attractions today and need a place to chill myself out. So I flip through my save list in Google Maps and find that Hoshino Coffee at Magnet by Shibuya 109 would be a good place. Located on the second floor, this cafe provides a vantage spot overlooking the popular Shibuya Crossing. Finally, my food is served. I enjoy my coffee and dessert while watching this backdrop of countless films, magazines and blogs happening live here. Trust me, this is one of the best chill-out places in the heart of the capital. Since I am right here, why don't I treat myself a special evening walk here? It is crowded, but this sprawling scramble intersection is an embodiment of Tokyo itself, action in all direction. The walk is an unquestioned must-do for any trip to Tokyo. Now, I have arrived at this futuristic restaurant serving traditional Japanese cuisine. This is not a normal sushi shop serving sushi using conveyor belts. In Uobe, once customers place their orders via multi-language touchscreen, the dishes are delivered by high-speed shoot to their seats. The flavors aren't quite as dazzling as the futuristic presentation. But when I am paying only 930 yen for this amount of food, it's hard to complain. I am now heading back to rest as I woke up super early today. It marks the end of my day too. I only spent 21.55 US dollars today and all of the spending is only on food. I have only 54.56 US dollars left in my wallet, could I still survive for another two days? Anyway, have a great night. Good morning, it is my day 3 here but it is just a weekday morning for local salarymen. I eat out like a local salaryman in Nakao during the morning rush hour, but this is a simple yet sumptuous breakfast. My first stop of the day is He Shrine. The real highlight of this shrine is its back entrance with a tunnel of 90 bright red Torii gates. This is such a serene place to photograph the Torii gates. Why need to go to the crowded one at Fushimi Inari in Kyoto? I have my early lunch since I need to spend a long time in the subsequent attraction visit. Now, I am at Ichiran, a famous ramen chain in Japan. After ordering and payment at the machine, I was whisked to a row of seats with wooden covers that offer privacy. The ramen is pretty inexpensive for a dish that leaves you completely full. When I tasted the ramen, I was so shocked that all the flavors, the meat, broth, vegetables, egg and spices came together like a symphony in my mouth. Trust me, this is one of the best ramen dishes I've ever tasted. My second stop of the day is Yasukuni Shrine. This shrine is often controversial as top war criminals were enshrined here. However, on the strictly touristic side and far away from political controversy, Yasukuni Shrine is home of more than 400 Some Yoshino cherry trees that welcome you in the precincts of the shrine. I am a fan of World War II, hence I pay a visit to Yusuken, a Japanese military and war museum. By paying the entrance fee of 1,000 yen, I get to see how the Pacific War was fought from the Japanese perspective. No photography is allowed here, hence I did not collect any video footages in Yusuken. I am now heading to Kudenshita Metro Station for the transit to my next attraction. On my way there, I pass by the north of Chidori Gafuchi Moat. This 700 meters greenway along the moat is lined up with cherry trees, mostly planted during the reconstruction efforts following World War II. A stroll along the greenway awards me the stunning view of the moat tinted pink by hundreds of cherry trees. As soon as I arrived at the metro station, I realized that my first Tokyo 48-hour metro pass is no longer valid. I have to activate my second 48-hour pass bought previously. Most metro stations in Tokyo provide free water. If you are a budget traveler like me, this would save you extra bucks spent on hydrating yourself. I have now arrived at Shinjuku to have my dinner. Shinjuku Station is one of the world's busiest station. Even though this is not my first time here, I was still overwhelmed, got lost and had difficulty locating the exit. It might not seem to be a good experience for a traveler to get lost here, but this turns out to be a unique travel story for me to share with my family and friends. So, enjoy getting lost at Shinjuku Station. Finally, I got out of the station, safely.
I have arrived at Mitsuya, a chain restaurant selling delicious gyudon. Gyudon is a rice meal with beef and onion simmered in a mildly sweet sauce flavored with dashi, soy sauce and mirin. The combo meal comes with salad and miso soup. It is not an expensive meal, but it is so delicious. Shinjuku is the largest nightlife area in Tokyo. After dinner, I enjoy roaming around the bustling neon-drenched streets of Shinjuku, especially Kabukicho. Walking around the neighborhood in the midst of these neon lights is a worthwhile activity in itself to end my night today. With that, my day 3 in Tokyo has ended. I have spent 25.36 US dollars today. Other than the entrance ticket for Yusuken, they are all on food. My total spending so far is 170.80 US dollars and I am left with 29.20 US dollars now. Good morning, I woke up super early again to visit Sensoji Temple. Sensoji is Tokyo's oldest temple, it usually gets very crowded after 10 am. Nakamisei is a shopping street located right in front of Sensoji. Various traditional local snacks and souvenirs can be found along this street. Funawa is one of the most famous shops in Nakamisei, I bought some kusumochi and swama as my breakfast today. As a fan of matcha, the matcha tempura manju definitely catches my eye. Tempura manju is a deep fried bun stuffed with strained red bean paste, it is so delicious. Sumida Park is located not far away from Sensoji, I visit the park for the second time on my way to Asakusa Metro Station. The park with cherry trees in full bloom and Tokyo Skytree at the backdrop is also an Instagrammable photo spot during the day. Next up, I come to Tsukiji of Chuo area. This is a glimpse of Japanese etiquette that you usually see in the train stations. Upon getting off the station, I am greeted by Tsukiji Honganji, a Buddhist temple with an Indian look. Do remember to wash your hands in the Chozuya before stepping into the temple. This is a Japanese custom to purify one's mind and body before approaching the main shrine and conversing with the gods. A short walk from the temple is Tsukiji Outer Market, a foodie wonderland especially for seafood lovers. What is there to do and see in Tsukiji Market? Eat. Seriously I'd be doing myself a diservice if I didn't try at least something here. This is a tourist attraction, so it is kind of expected that the seafood here is overpriced. However, I still find that some shops here offer full seafood meals at reasonable prices, one of them being Marukita. I ordered a salmon don meal, which is a salmon rice topped with salmon roe and Japanese omelette. This is just a simple meal compared to other more appealing foods along the street. But the taste of the fresh salmon really blows my mind, I have never tasted salmon as good as this outside Japan. My next stop is Zojoji Temple located next to Tokyo Tower. This is also a great place for photos that best represent Tokyo, offering a unique blend of tradition and modernity. The Garden of Unborn Children is located next to the temple, it is also a unique place to visit. Rows of stone Jizo statues are dressed up to mourn children that are lost before birth. A short walk away from the temple is Tokyo Tower, one of the iconic landmarks of Tokyo. Since this is an important landmark, it is a must-do for me to capture some photos here. Now I am back in the metro station. As a matcha lover, I couldn't hold my temptation when seeing a vending machine like this selling my favorite matcha ice cream. I give myself a treat and enjoy the ice cream in a park nearby. The ice cream costs only 170 yen, it is such a budget way compared to having my dessert in an overpriced cafe. It is the dinner time now and this is my last dinner before leaving Tokyo. I am back in Tsukiji Market and realize that most of the shops are closed during the evening. I am left with 2,238 yen, 14.78 US dollars, now, hence I am hoping to get some cheap eat here. I stumble upon Sushizanmai, a very popular restaurant with a long line during the day. There is no line here in the evening, I am hesitating whether to stick to my budget or have a fulfilling last dinner. After some hesitation, I finally gave in since it is not often for me to come to Japan and enjoy the Japanese cuisine like this. The Sushi Zanmai in Tsukiji is the main branch with sushi ingredients put in display cases and sushi chef making the sushi by hand behind the counter. Zanmai means indulgence or luxury in Japanese, but I am surprised to find out that the price is pretty reasonable here. 
The service is prompt and polite and the sushi masters are extremely friendly to me though not conversing in English. I order the choice of my most favorite sushi in a combo. The sushi is delicately made and tastes extremely fresh. That marks the end of my day 4 and I have spent 22.63 US dollars today. I am left with 6.56 US dollars and from now on and I hope that this is sufficient for me to make it back home. Good morning, today is my last day here and I am gonna catch my flight departing in Tokyo Narita Airport later in the morning. I don't want to return home empty-handed for my family and friends, hence I decided to give them some budget yet meaningful gifts. I customize my own postcard using the photo taken during my last visit to Japan and print out in the 7-Eleven shop nearby. The price of printing a postcard is 60 yen, and one worldwide stamp costs 120 yen. I posted two postcards, one for my family and another for my best buddy. These are the cheapest yet sincere gifts when you are running out of budget. Now it's time to get to the airport. I use my Tokyo Metro Pass for this metro ride since it is still valid. I only realize that there is a charge of 1190 yen to get to the airport via Narita Sky Access Line even with my Metro Pass. It is kind of frustrated to know this. Because of this extra charge, I am over budget for 3.67 US dollars for my Tokyo trip. My spending today is 10.24 US dollars. I do not have breakfast today since the breakfast will be provided in my flight. I have boarded my flight. So now let's have a reflection on what I've spent and what we could do to maintain a low budget while traveling in an expensive city. Nearly half of my spending comes from lodging just like most of my other overseas trips and it is unavoidable since I need a place to sleep. However, I was able to keep my four nights lodging cost within 100 US dollars by staying in a backpacker dormitory. Staying in a dorm did not degrade my enjoyment in Tokyo too much as I only spent a few hours in the room. Moreover, just like most of the hostels in Japan, the hostel provided the privacy I needed and the shared facilities were spotlessly clean. Food contributes to the second largest portion of my total spending in Tokyo, but I only spent 67.96 US dollars in 4 days. I ate like a local Japanese and avoided expensive restaurants and overpriced food in touristic places. I have tasted a lot of good Japanese food, hence going cheap did not degrade my enjoyment on food as well. The third one is transport. I have only spent 27.67 US dollars on transport including the airport transfers. I was able to keep this cost low as I went for the transport passes which suit my itinerary the most. For sightseeings, other than 6.60 US dollars spent on museum tickets, I have enjoyed all of them for free. Without spending a single dime, I have visited numerous iconic landmarks, cultural attractions and enjoyed the transient beauty of cherry blossoms. As for gifts, I only paid for postcards and stamps. In my view, gifts do not need to be expensive as long as they express my sincerity to the people I care about. In conclusion, I spent 3.67 US dollars more than my intended budget due to something I did not foresee. But I still feel satisfied for enjoying Tokyo the way it is with a low budget. I am seeing the snow-capped Mount Fuji for the second time, but this time I am on my way back. The main point I want to express in this video is you do not need to have a lot of money to travel. You just need to know your priorities, educate yourself, make some compromises and adapt to the situation. I strongly encourage everyone to try on a budget travel and see the world as much as you can while you are young. If you like the video like this, please do not hesitate to give a like and subscribe. Your support is the biggest encouragement for me to produce more videos like this. I am Ryan C.Y., signing off now.